Let me see if I'm live. I think I am, but... Yep, I am. Um... This video is called, What God Has Been Wowing My Mind With Lately. Um... It's... Is going to be like three, three sections. Um, first of all, it's going to be. Um, I'm going to talk about tools and intention. Second of all, I'm going to talk about sin, success, and self. And third of all, I'm going to talk a bit. About a bit about preaching, um, and how to, um, go, go uh, how, if you feel you're a preacher, how, in my opinion, how you should approach it, um, or how you know that you're a preacher, what to do if you feel the unction to preach. So, let's pray. Father, um, you put a lot on my plate today, and I must be crazy for doing all of this, because all of these can be three separate sermons, but you ordained them to be one. Help me to ex expound and explain what you've been teaching me with clarity and precision. Speak to me, speak through me, in the name of Jesus, amen. So, yes, so the first section is tools and intention. I was thinking the other day about social media and that whole, and that whole thing. Um, how people can be mean on social media, how people can use social media for good or whatever and i said lord um what do you want me to say about this and um he 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 said the tool of social media he said social media is just a tool the key is the intention he said Social media is not bad in itself, but it's people's intention that is um, unsavory. He said, um, he said, um, tools without intention create disaster. Because let, let's say you have a hammer. And, but, and you could either use that hammer to build houses for Habitat for Humanity, or you can use that hammer to kill um, people over the head. You can hit somebody over the head many times and kill them. Um, so the only difference, same tool, different intention. So if you go to social media intending to be feeling uh, depressed or in intending to feel like, oh, this person is better than me, you can find that. But if you go to social media intending to find it uplifting, encouraging, uh, videos, you can find those too. It's all about intention. And, um, with intention, with the right intention, social media can be a powerful tool. Tools are, tools are intended to be a vehicle to expound God's glory. Tools are intended to be a vehicle 
to expand God's glory. Or they could be intended to forward the devil's agenda. To, or they could be intended to forward the devil's agenda. Let me say that all again. Tools can be intended to expound God's glory, or they can be intended to forward the devil's agenda. It's your choice. So it's not the tool that's bad. It's the intention. And he's like, with social media, change your intention to use this tool for his glory or you can continue forwarding the devil's agenda it's your choice and that was so powerful to me because it's not the tool that is the problem it's the intention behind the tool that is the problem um, so that's the first one that God was born my mind with, because with that, it's like you can, you, you can go further than you've ever dreamed, because if you get, if you have the right intention, or better yet, if you have God's intention for this tool, you can do a lot. It's just amazing. He's like, get past the way the world uses this tool and ask me what my intention is for this tool. Forget about the way they're using it. Ask me what I want to do with it. And he wants to expound the church's reach using vocabulary and introduce things that the world hasn't even thought of yet. But we're too stuck in what we think social media is for. Oh, it's bad or it's great. It's not bad or great. It's a tool. And you could either use it for good or use it for evil. So that's the first thing that the Lord has been teach has has been on my mind with this week. Uh, the second thing thing is sin, success, and self. Um, I was thinking how we often, as people. Um, try to pray our sins away. We bring our we bring our sins to God. Some of us bring our joys to God. Some of us bring our uh, pain to God and our successes. But He's saying in this hour, He doesn't want your sin, or He doesn't want your success. He wants first of all yourself. He wants to hear about your your sin. He wants to hear about your success. But first, before he deals with that, he wants you. He wants all of you. And the mistake that we've done in the church, we say, bring your sins to God or bring your successes to God. He wants to celebrate with you. And that's all true. But first, he just wants you as a person. He wants all of you. He wants to be in life with you. He wants to do life with you. He wants to celebrate with you. But, but first, he just wants you as a person. Before, he, before your gift, he wants you and he wants you to want him as well just as God not to get you out of hell not to do anything like that but just as 
your God just as a as a uh, as a Holy Spirit who loves you. He just wants you to want Him. So, because when you bring your sin to God and not yourself to God, you're not bringing all you have to offer to to the Lord. And the the great thing is is when you bring yourself to God in time and through a process, He will work out your your sin, and He will teach you how to deal with your successes but you need to bring yourself to god you cannot pray the the devil away you cannot i've heard many homosexual people say i tried to pray the gay away but it didn't work but you cannot pray the gay away because um that's a that um a sin issue but he wants you he doesn't want just your sexuality he just doesn't want your you know your propensity to gossip or to drink too much or whatever you feel your sin is he wants you he wants a relationship with you all of you and in that process, in that relationship, through a process of learning and faith and tearing down and wrestling with you, he will, he will work that stuff out in you. But first, he wants yourself. He just doesn't want your sin or your success. He wants you just as a person, just as you are. And he wants to love on you like never before. Um, and it is, and if we can get this, he doesn't want anything from you that he wants you. It will change change people's lives. If people knew that he that God just wanted them, that they didn't have to do anything or whatever. Um, to get to him that he just wanted a relationship with them and in the process of time he will deal with whatever issue uh, that he deems necessary to deal with um, people will come flooding to the body of Christ but some people think Oh, they're not holy enough or they're not perfect enough. No one is. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done. The Lord wants you. He loves you. And that's what he told me to say. There is nothing that you've done that is too hard for God to forgive. But first... He wants you before he wants to forgive you he just wants your heart he doesn't want anything from you he just want you nobody wants to be in a relationship where where people want something from them and he doesn't want to be in a relationship where where all we want is something from him either and he doesn't want to be in a relationship where we would want to be in a relationship where um, somebody just wanted something from us or to fix something about us. We are in relationship with people because that person brings something into our lives. And the Lord wants to bring something to our lives, not take away something from our lives. Uh, so, some people have the misconception that becoming a Christian is just like, oh, I'm not going to be able to have fun anymore. This is just not going to be... Um, 
this is just going to be boring. But that is so further from the t far from the truth. It just opens up a world of fun and like it's just so amazing and opens up a world of real joy and real laughter and real peace. And that's the Lord saying he's waiting for you. He loves you so much. He's waiting for you today. Um, and last but not least, I was talking, I was talking to the Lord this morning, I was thinking of a question that I heard somebody get on an online video one time about, about preaching and uh, how, how they know uh, they were to be a preacher or what they can do to, like, if they feel they are a preacher. And first of all, what I have to say to that is develop your relationship with God first. Because preaching, to me, this is only my personal opinion, it's about expounding the gospel. It's about telling people the good news of Jesus Christ. And it, 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 the ways of preaching use your personality. So develop your, your personal relationship with God first. That's what I, I always say. Develop your personal relationship with God and that takes time. Uh, that takes that takes time and patience. And develop your ear for what he's saying. Um, and how you develop your ear is again through patience and time and just knowing how he speaks to you and that's how you develop your ear because the a lot of people say well start with reading your bible but what i would say is sometimes according to the personality of the person the Lord will speak um, to them using his word, but using it in a different way. Like, for me, because I can't hold a Bible and physically read a Bible, and listening to it is just so, it's not hard, but it's, it can be long, often... He will use music to expound his word to me. And often he will use movies to expound his word to me. Because he knows that that's a train that I understand. And not that I don't love reading the word. I do. I do. Or listening to it. But for me, it's so, it's more complicated than to, uh, to zone in on passages of scripture or, you know, the word of scripture. So, so often he will use extraordinary methods to speak to me. And because of our years and because of time, I can now tell if it's him or not and when he settled that word with that song in me then he will take me to the word and say go to this this passage of scripture 
and he will just confirm it through his written word. Now, that's, that's generally how he works with me. But some people, uh, they go straight to the written word and they, they are just so dynamos and in the word and study of scripture and all that stuff. Um, but for me, for most preachers, they'll tell you to start reading your Bible. For me, I, I tend to believe my personal opinion, um, my, from my personal experience, not opinion, this has been my experience, you have to first develop your ear and see how he speaks to you, see how he rolls with you. And he uses um, your personality, your, your quirkiness to speak to you most times. So if you're a fisherman, he will speak to you about things on the water. If you're, you know, like, if you're into uh, singing, he will, he will speak to you in music notes. If you're a scholar, he'll speak to you in a scholarly way. When, when I think of Jesus's ministry and how he spoke through the word, he used a lot of agricultural terms, not because um, he liked agriculture, but because in that time, in Second Temple, uh, the Second Temple Jews um, understood ag agriculture. They understood what he was saying when he was talking about seeds and sowing and all of that. They understood all of that. So he spoke in that language. So Jesus always speaks in a language that the hearer can understand. It's not, it's not the, um, it's not really the, um, backdrop he uses is the pin principles he's trying to expose. And that's why he, you'll hear him say, uh, the sower and all of that stuff because he used what they knew at that time to expose the principles of what he was trying to say. He loved to tell stories. He loved to give examples. He loved to expound his word in that way because he knew that they were, that the people of that time and the people of that backdrop would understand. If he was talking to um, Amer, if he was talking to the English speaking world in 2021, he would probably use those same principles, but he would show us Instagram, he would show us Facebook, we would, we would hear about, um, we'd hear about, uh, the things that we use now, he would probably text us and probably, you know, all of that, and he would show us, he would show us, I bet, I'm not expressing it gambling, but I would say, he would show us using our phones, because that is the tools that we understand. So instead of going back to my first topic, shying away from social media, think of Jesus and how he would use social media to expose and explain his word. Think of the parables um, 
and the principles that God is trying to expose and try and come up with examples of that to to expound to ex, to expose the truth of his word so guys i thank you so much for joining me today and i know it's kind of a lot that i unpacked and the lord was just burning in me those sermons and i said he said i want you to speak on these three things i'm like really and he said yep yeah. so i so i just did what i was told <laughs> Uh, I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye. God bless. To me, you look so nice, and we keep hiding what's going on in town. Why do I shame when I'm looking that funny? You share how you feel. What if we win the freedom this great matters? What if we were real? What if we were real? You keep, uh, uh, you keep trying to make you look so nice, and you keep hiding what's going on inside. What if I share my brokenness? What if you share how you feel? What if we weren't afraid of this crazy mess? What if we were real? What if we were real?